Hey guys, it's Marty from OwingsArt.com and today we're going to take a look at these chameleon changing color markers. And basically uh, where I got these was my friends at uh, Wet Paint in St. Paul. Um, that's my favorite little local art store in the entire universe and I'll put a link in the description and all that. They gave me these markers and said, hey Marty, why don't you give these a test drive and see what you think of them. So they gave me this five pen sort of primary color set and that's just what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at these together. Um, these pens are really an interesting invention, mainly because you can get some crazy different tones with these pens, but also because they're sort of, um, they're a little bit nerdy, I would call it. So they've got this way to m change the tones in the pens that um, requires that you touch the nib into a mixing chamber and do some do some funny things with them but at the end of the day uh, what you get is really kind of a fascinating experience with these markers and in your artwork um, these come with two types of tips there's the bullet nip nib or the hard nib end and then there's a softer brush nib end and here's some um, interesting uh, information about these uh, markers so they're made in China but they come with a Japanese nib and brush end um, they come in sets of five with different varieties of sets of five and then in a larger set of 22 and that comes with a blender. They're sold open stock as well so if you just need one or two pens you can, can buy them that way. They are alcohol based but they're acid free and what's interesting about these pens is much like the Copic markers these guys are refillable and you can replace the ink, the nibs, the toning medium, all that stuff and they come with a color-coded cap so they took a page out of Copic's uh, book and uh, and were able to uh, you know color code the caps and they've got kind of funny numbers on it. looks a lot like a Copic on the end so you kinda of have to hold the marker in a particular manner uh, straight up and down with the mixing chamber at the top not upside down like this and I'm demonstrating you won't get the change the, the marker definitely has to be in the upright position with the nib facing up toward the sky and then you can begin to see how the um, the toning nib affects the regular nib. See where it it kind of fades it at the beginning there and uh, takes the color out and gradually the color gets stronger and stronger. Now the longer you leave the tip, the marker tip connected to the toning nib in the mixing chamber the more the lighter it will be when it starts out so the less tone or the lighter tone you'll get and again like I said uh, the longer you leave it uh, the longer uh, or the lighter it'll be as it starts out eventually it comes back in now here's what the the mixing chamber looks like so you place the nib end in contact with that toning nib like I said and then the longer you let it sit there um, the lighter uh, the tone is going to be when you when you start and I I repeat that several times because it's important that you sort of know how this works otherwise you take a look at these markers and go what how, do, how does this work and but the directions are pretty thorough inside of the packet and they explain things pretty well if you take the time to read them but uh, so you can see how the uh, and we'll play with the tones a little bit more here and it'll, you'll get a really good idea of how these work but I mixed the blue and the yellow and got a nice green color see in the upper right hand corner of the notebook there I got a really pretty good color there and here's a good example of like the the black so I I left the nib on there for probably 15 seconds or so maybe 20 seconds and you can see all of the different gradations I got there can you imagine what you can do with that marker trying to get like a, a metallic um, look that'd be pretty cool and here's here's more demonstration of sort of the the uh, the way that you can get different gradations from the same exact marker and uh, I just think that's pretty fascinating that's pretty darn cool when you think about it so if you if you can imagine now you get halfway through a tone and you want to keep that tone all you have to do is just put the marker tip in contact with that toning nib again in the mixing chamber and you can pretty much consistently keep the same tone if you use if you keep them connected or yeah I guess connected for lack of a better word for the same length of time so that's pretty cool as well 
And like I said, the instructions are pretty thorough. As you can see there, they, they cover a lot of ground. Now here I'm just going to draw some spheres, but use the technique of, you know, starting out light and getting darker. So that first one worked pretty cool. I mean, my sphere isn't exactly drawn perfect, but sort of get the idea. And basically the manufacturer uh, says these are pretty light fast, but again, I test all that myself and eventually we'll find out if they are or not. But here's the thing with these, uh, they're not really not recommended for children under 14 years of age, really. Um, even though they conform to the ASTMD standards of being like a non-toxic um, art supply, it's still not recommended for like I said, children. So probably because of the alcohol content and things like that, and who knows what's in the uh, the blending or mixing, toning uh, stuff. So um, I would say, and I couldn't find a lot of information on that, but I would say these are really pretty much for adults only. But you can see what a nice job um, they do, especially if you want to get gradations. And this is almost painterly in my opinion. It's it's kind of neat what you can do with these markers once you get the hang of them. And I'm, I'm just trying to add in some shadow here. And I noticed one thing with the marker when it didn't have a lot of this blue marker, didn't have a lot of the pigment in it. When I just uh, got done connecting it to the fusing nib, it basically can remove color. So it can actually lighten um, the color that you're using. So say for instance you have a tone and you went a little too dark you could connect it to the mixing uh, mixing chamber again pull it out and then go across the darker color and it would actually lighten it. So that's another cool thing about these. I should also quickly mention that you don't really this doesn't require, require any special paper so I'm just using this in uh, uh, a little sketchbook I had sitting around so um, it seems to work fine. It doesn't pill or anything like that. There's a little bleed bleed through, but I expect that with any kind of alcohol marker. Um, generally, you just have to be conscientious about the thickness of the paper you use and uh, things like that. But uh, well, I want to thank the folks over at Wet Paint Art for giving me something really cool to take a look at. I was just really impressed by these. Once I got the hang of it, they're really cool, and the effects you can get are just I think pretty awesome. They'll probably, these would be a really nice addition to your regular marker repertoire. And I think if you bought the set, um, they're not overly expensive but, and they, and they are kind of geeky and nerdy, but they're just cool. I love geeky and nerdy stuff. And you know, we don't really get anything new in the art world until somebody invents it and we try it out. So I give props to the chameleon company for putting something really new and different out there. So thanks wet paint. Really cool. What a fun, uh, fun thing to look at. Well, now it's time for the bonus segment and a look at the Caran d'Ache Fabralo brush pens. A while back, if you've uh, subscribed to my channel or you've watched my videos, I reviewed the Caran d'Ache Fabralo watercolor markers, just like these, only they weren't the brush ends, they were the hard bullet nib ends. But they performed so well and so spectacularly that I really just was compelled to try the brush end pens. So I ordered this pen set, and I think there's 15 here, ordered them directly from Europe, and uh, they came in the mail. The shipping was not much at all. They came in the mail a couple, I don't know, about a week later or so, and I've just been excited to get them out and try them uh, because, again, as I said, I was super impressed with the original review of the uh, bullet nib ends. As you can see here, the color goes down really vibrant. So say you were doing adult coloring or whatever, you could just use these as a straight marker uh, in that regard um, and apply the color like that. Or you could apply it and then wet it later and have some neat watercolor effects. But the thing that really impressed me about these markers when I reviewed them previously was just uh, the really nice color you could get from these and the really... Uh, D nice dispersion so they you know you just added the water and they kind of just flowed nicely and now these colors I let these dry for a few minutes because I wanted to test them 
in their dry state and see if you could go back and add water and reactivate the color and sure enough uh, it worked fine I mean I had to work a little bit at getting the color moved around so I didn't have this sort of block underneath but once I did that uh, the color was really nice especially like the purples and the reds and some of the greens the um, the other colors that are more muted kind of tend to remain a little bit more muted but that's okay you need you got a nice variety in this group of 15 pens here and this set of pens wasn't very expensive at all I think I I don't know I paid less than 30 bucks or something like that for them and that included shipping so uh, not bad at all uh, when you think about the mileage you can get from these now these pens are not refillable uh, like um, well really I don't know of any watercolor markers that are refillable maybe there are some but I don't think the Tombos or the Windsor and Newton watercolor markers are refillable I just when you're done you you have to get more but um, and these Fabralos again they really fall under the Karen Dosh student grade uh, umbrella I guess of art supplies but for me and especially when it comes to Karen Dosh when they say student grade sometimes their student grade stuff is every bit as good if not better than stuff that other companies called art call artist grade so I think I've mentioned that before but if you know me and you watch my videos you know I'll be a big fan of Karen Dosh and the Swiss uh, uh, workers and workmen and craftsmen who make their art supplies they're just fantastic so as you can see here uh, the colors just great and with a little bit of effort you get some nice mixing now these look a little blocky underneath here there's a little color where I drew a little block type shape where I drew the color in at first but um, imagine that's because I put these on and let them dry first so if you're willing to add some color and then water, I think you might be able to avoid that. Well, don't forget to subscribe, comment. I always like to hear from you guys and uh, snuck that bowl of Cheerios in there at the end. But uh, which, uh, well, OK, you can leave a comment about that if you want. But anyway, um, thanks for watching. This has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. Take care, everybody. So long for now. Bye bye.